Hey there, Fix It Tony here. I have a new episode. Uh, today we're going to be swapping out our snow tires for our summer tires. So if you live anywhere in the snow belt and you have winters that are cold and snowy and slushy and icy, uh, getting snow tires on your car would be a good idea. Um, we have, or I have, snow tires mounted to a dedicated set of steel rims, and um, I swap out the rims, the, the whole wheel set, um, at the beginning of the snow season, and then now we're coming up to the end of March. We're feeling pretty comfortable that we might be out of any big snow events now, so um, we're taking, I'm going to take the gamble. To get uh, the, the summer tires back on. Now, I store my tires up here in the garage on a rack um, on the wall like this and I do have them covered just to kind of help things look prettier. And uh, so the first job is to lug all these big heavy tires down. This is always the tricky part because I mounted it kind of close to the garage door so it's always a little tricky and these things are heavy, you know, these aluminum alloy wheels that I have, I think they're 17 or 18 inch rims. Uh, it's a lot of tire and, and rim, so it's pretty heavy, kind of clumsy. Um, that's the only problem when you get these newer cars with big rims and wheels is that it's, it's heavy and uh, storing could be a problem, but I found this storage system to be very handy. So I will be back and uh, the tires will be on the ground. I want to show you the tools that we're going to be using today. I have a foam pad that I'm going to need to kneel on to look underneath to find my jacking points. I have a kneeling creeper that will help me save my knees when I'm taking the lug bolts off and the tires. I have a magnetic tool tray to hold the bolts. Anti-seize compound that I'll be applying to the back of the rim. Uh, prior to reinstalling so that it makes it easier to pop off uh, when the season comes to, to do it. Um, tire marker. Tire marker I didn't have last year, but I have this year. I will be marking the front tire and I'll be marking it so that it ends up in the back because the tread wear will be higher in the front given that there's going to be wheel spin that was happening in the winter time heavier weight and the drive wheels. Uh, tire depth gauge to measure my tread depth of my summer tire so I know which ones to put to the front to the back because I didn't have the chalk last year to mark which way to go. Um, sort of a quick spinner for my lug nuts with a 19 millimeter socket. So it's nice to have duplicate sockets of the same size so you're not, well, saving time not having to swap out. A breaker bar with a 19 millimeter uh, socket, a drill with a wire brush, actually a brass bristles to clean the backside of the rims before applying the anti-seize compound, a light, a floor jack with a wooden, a plywood wooden pad to help protect the metal underside carriage. It's always important to have a, a good quality piece of plywood um, between the jack and your car so you don't scratch it. Um, I think that's all my tools, uh, the light. Okay, all right. Okay, so this is what a tire tread depth gauge looks like. There's a pin and this pin is attached to a barrel that has measurements on it. It has millimeter scale and 30 seconds scale. So the way it works is you push it all the way down Place the pin in the tread gap, push down until it's flat, and then you read it, and we have about, I'm gonna measure in 30 seconds, so we have about six and a half, six and a half to seven 30 seconds. This is about six 30 seconds, all right. We're going to go to the next tire. Six thirty seconds. Um, 
six and a half, 30 seconds. So six, 30 seconds. This one is uh, seven, 30 seconds. Seven, 30 seconds. Um, seven, 30 seconds and seven thirty seconds. So, these two tires are gonna be on the front because they have a little bit more tread than those two, okay? These two are gonna go in the rear, these two are gonna go in the front. Before we do any jacking or removing of tires, the first thing you gotta do is place the cars and parking brake on okay so that's the first and foremost you got to put the parking brake on different cars will have their parking brake in different places on this car it's right here all right so that parking brake is on you probably heard that the next thing is since we're going to be working on the driver side I mean on the passenger side the tires we're going to put wheel chocks in. So we're going to be jacking up the car. And we've got to block the front side and the rear side of, of, the, of a tire. So that's sort of a safety. That's additional safety. You use wheel chocks and you chalk the wheels up. So if we follow the arrow, we see a cutout of the undercarriage and you will see a double stamped steel. So you have the body and then a double lip. So the jack is gonna go right on this little bump here and it's sort of double stamped steel. It's not obvious, obvious, um, but you should see another arrow right and that arrow is pointing right here so this is the balance point so that's where I'm going to be attaching my jack Started with the arrow. And you can see how it's about centered on top of the circle mount, right? That's kind of what you gotta do. I need to clean the mounting surface of the new wheels. Um, and I'm gonna apply anti-seize compound. That's important so that it'll be easier for me to remove the tires when it comes time to. So it's just gonna be light scratching. Uh, brass shouldn't do too much damage to the aluminum wheels because this is softer. Okay, high speed, high speed on a drill. And uh, cordless drill is obviously easier. If you have a grinder, you know, as long as the wheel, you're not applying too much pressure, you'll sort of see how it, how it sounds. Okay. That's uh, the first wheel, and I will continue to do the other wheel. All right, so the grinding and cleaning of the wheel is done. I'll just take a shop rag and wipe the area clean. I have my 
anti-seize loop um, compound and mine has a built-in brush and what I'm doing is just dabbing the compound sort of all over around the hole around the edges you can kind of see what I'm doing right and then I'm just brushing a thin layer over the surface the touching surfaces and I'm just making sure I don't have globs okay it's got to be uniform all right there see how it's just a thin layer So I got, I'm going to do that in my two front wheels. Alright, so before I jack up the car, I'm going to take my breaker bar and I'm going to crack all of these lug nuts. Okay, so now I'm going to jack up the car. Now you wonder how high do you jack up the car? Well, I'm going to have this foam thing. See how I can slip it underneath? To me, that is far enough. Be able to use this. Not a problem. Okay, so when you get the tire off, you're going to see, you can see here it got corrosion on the hub. So we're going to clean that. We're going to clean off this mounting surface and just scr scratch a little bit of the threads. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to avoid hitting the disc brakes from damaging it. Okay. Um, can you grab me a rag? So that's been cleaned up, and I'm just going to wipe the dust off, and then I'm going to put an anti-seize compound. So back to our anti-seize compound. Now because I put compound already on the mating surfaces of the wheel, what I just want to put on this part of the wheel is this section right here, this little rusty area. So that's all I'm going to be coating with a thin layer. Okay, that's going to be where it could get stuck again. So we're just applying the anti-seize. Do not apply it to the threads like I just did by accident because then the threads will not stay tight. So I'm going to clean my mistake. So now 
the wheel is ready for mounting. And the way you're going to mount it is with our first roll, this tire over, new tire over. And I rolled it on my pad. So try to get it close to alignment so that when you lift it up, there. So you can see how there, center it. Now we take our lug bolts. Where's that rack? Okay. Now I'm going to start finger tightening. You have to make sure that you can put this in all the way with your fingers. Because you don't want to cross the threads, and that damages the lugs and the nuts, and it causes more damage. The bolts could be rusty, the lug nut, the lug could be rusty, but it's gotta be that easy, okay? If it's not that easy, something is wrong. If you go to a tire shop, they just put it on with a drill and a gun, and it just causes more damage. I've had several cars, every one of my cars, eventually the lug nut or the slugs get damaged by a factory, a dealer, mechanic. You can't really trust them. All right, so these are now all finger tight. And then I get my rapid spinner. Okay, and I'm going to not reef on each one, but just get it more seated. Okay, we're going to do a final torque once the car is lowered. What we're doing is we're having the lugs, the lug, excuse me, the lug nuts, um, uh, centering the rim on the, on, the, on the lugs. So you can't get a lot of torque out of this thing. So it's just enough torque to seat the nut into the rim. There you can see, you can't really do much else. But that's enough to allow you to lower the vehicle. Okay, now we're going to carefully lower the vehicle. The way we lower it is we just turn our jack handle slowly, loosening it. And now the tire, remember what I said before, you never go to a new tire you're absolutely 100% done with this one, okay? If you want to know what your torque setting ought to be, check out your owner's manual. Finish tightening the lug nuts, push down on the wrench at the end of the handle for increased leverage, tighten the lug in a star-like pattern, torque specifications. All right, now we're gonna go to torque specifications. Here we go, technical specifications. Torque specifications, here we go. Wheel and torque specifications. You can read through this. And so we have the lug pattern. So 135 Newton meters, okay. I'm gonna get my torque wrench and set it to 135 Newton meters. So, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And 
I'm just tightening evenly. So now is the torquing. That clicking noise is when you achieve the right torque based on what I dialed here. So, yep, there. You don't go past the torque because you can damage the wrench. Yep. Okay. And that's it. The tire has mounted and torqued. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe. And I'll keep up with the new content. And uh, I'm not going to show you me doing the other half of the car, but it's basically the same steps for all four wheels. Bye now.